Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've got a really short video for you this week with some tips on vertical uphill 6011. I'm taking a break from all the TIG, but I do have a cool project going on with high-speed TIG pulse on really thin wall tubing for a bicycle frame. We're going to weld it all up and then test the welds, and that'll come out in a week or two. This week, tips for a 6011 vertical T-joint. This is a joint that every student will do in school, and some people have trouble with it, so... Here's some tips. Number one, find a way to prop on something. I'm not propping on anything here, and you see my body swaying and everything, and as your heart beats, it, it kind of messes with you. So it's always better to just find a way to prop on something, whether it's vice grips or tack welding a, uh, a piece of angle iron to something, clamping it to something or whatever. Find a way to prop, and you'll do better. And once you prop, you might want to take a few dry runs. Just make sure you can burn the whole rod and not get hung up with your... Uh, you know, cable under your foot or something like that or getting hung up on something. And then I'm starting here at 70 amps just to work my way up. And I'm using a, a little whip and pause by one per second. 70 amps, a little bit cold. See, I don't have enough arc force with that arc to really drive that, uh, that puddle in there and, and fan out. You can see right here, just 10 more amps, it starts to fan out a little bit, get a little bit flatter. That's, that's better. So tip number two, use a slight whip and pause at the rate of about one per second. That'll give you a nice rhythm and a nice uniformity. So here I'm going up to uh, 85 amps, and that's better still. Still using about one per second, little whip and pause. I'm not coming way out of the puddle. Just enough movement to allow the puddle to freeze momentarily. Tip number three, 85 amps. Pretty good starting point for 1 8 6011 rod uphill. Some guys go hotter. 85 is a good starting point. Let's talk about dig a little bit here. What is the dig function? The dig function on one of these uh, Miller Dynasty 200s and a lot of other machines these days have it, allows you to adjust the arc characteristics when you're stick welding. You can set it up higher. Like if I go all the way up to 100 here, I have a really aggressive and digging arc. Or if I go way low, I got a much softer, smoother arc. And the way that works is by the machine sensing the voltage. As you begin to stick the rod, as you get a really, really tight arc, your voltage drops, and your machine will sense that and bump the amperage up, keep you from sticking the rod. So if you set it up high, it just keeps bumping the amperage up, and you can just about push a rod all the way through a piece of 316 steel or something. So for 6010 and 6011, set it to 50 or 60. That's a good dig setting for those rods. Now the dig setting can be used for two things, either to penetrate more or to just use a lower amperage on a rod without the rod going out. And that's why it is very useful for open butt 6010 root passes on pipe. It lets you jam that rod in tight without the rod going out, even at a lower amperage than you could use otherwise without the dig function. Now the 6011 and 6010s freeze really quickly, so that's why you see these distinct rough ripples. It's kind of hard to make them really pretty, or at least it is for me. 7018, on the other hand, will give you fine ripples because the puddle cools much slower. It's just a whole different rod. It's designed differently. It's designed for different applications. And for a 7018 rod, a dig setting of 30 is a really good setting. Gives you a nice smooth arc without too much undercut and too much spatter or anything like that. So before we go today, I'd like to invite you to visit my forum at forum.weldingtipsandtricks.com. I think you'll find when you get there a very knowledgeable and helpful bunch of folks and it's a very friendly environment and we are going to try to keep it that way. Also I'd like to give you a little preview, a little heads up of the next few projects coming up. Of course there's that bicycle where I'm welding uh, really thin wall steel tubing using high speed TIG pulse. We're going to test those welds out in kind of a unique way. I've got a heavy duty aluminum fixture. It's going to take a push-pull aluminum MIG to do it. Also, I'm going to fabricate a boom arm and I'm going to hang a wire feeder off of it so I don't ever have to move my welding machine. I just learned of a new wire feeder product that lets anyone take a Millermatic 250 or any machine like that and have a remote wire feeder on the end of a boom arm for not much money. So stay tuned.